Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another road trip pilgrimage. Last time, you might remember, we visited Father Sebastian at St. Mary's Church in Claremont. Today, we're going to meet up with Father Sebastian again for something really special. We're going to go see the oldest Roman Catholic Church in New Hampshire, the very first Catholic Church, and that's Old St. Mary's in Claremont. This is going to be a little bit of a longer episode because there's so much to see, so much history, so much cool stuff. So buckle up. Remember to like this video, hit the like button and subscribe so that you can find out when more of these road trip pilgrimages come out. We're going to begin our tour today by checking out the rectory in Claremont. So here we are in the rectory at St. Mary's. We're going to meet with Claire, who worked here for the parish for 40 years, knows the history of the place really well. She's going to give us the rundown about old St. Mary's church and uh, tell us what to look for. So here we are with Claire, who's uh, been a member of this parish and has worked at this parish for a long, long time and has agreed to sit down and, and show us some of the history of St. Mary's Church. So nice to meet you, Claire. My, nice to meet you. So this is the story of old St. Mary's Church in Claremont, New Hampshire. Mm. I called it a sagger. Of human life, dedication and devotion, significantly unique in the history of our state, country, and most probably in the world. Old St. Mary's Church, one of the great events in the history of the church in New England, and one of the very oldest Catholic structures in Eastern United States. And this story starts with Daniel Barber, 1795, who was rector for 24 years and who had doubts about being Episcopalian and started to study the Catholic faith. Hmm. Point of interest, Daniel's father Thomas was a Calvinist and Daniel started as a Congregationalist but changed to Episcopalian. It's quite a history. <laughs> and then from the classroom in the old church, you can see the Episcopalian church. This is a window on the second floor of Old St. Mary's and you can see the church from the window. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was kind of awesome. Virgil Barber, this is what it's all about was the son of Daniel and Chloe Chase Barber. Virgil was married, he had a wife, Jerusalem. He had four daughters, Mary, Abigail, Susan. They were all eventually Ursuline nuns. Josephine was the youngest one. She was a visitation nun. Then there was one son, Samuel, and he became a Jesuit priest. Virgil Barber's family lived in the White House next to the church. The first boys' Catholic church in New Hampshire considered a school of higher learning and a prep school for the Jesuits. The Jesuits were very prominent in this area, or this time age. The school went by the name of Claremont Catholic Academy. Sometimes seminary was the likely word. James Fitton, I don't know if you've ever heard of that name, who began Holy Cross College, is noted to have attended this school. The first Catholic cemetery in New Hampshire Daniel's wife, Chloe, was the first Catholic to be buried in a graveyard next to the church. And I've often gone to try to find it, but evidently, it's so they didn't have monuments like they have now. It's near the gate next to the church and it's somewhere. So I don't know if we'll ever find it, but she's there. The school was held in the church on the second floor. 150 students from a distance of 10 to 15 miles attended. In 1825 to 1827, the church closed. Virgil was instructed to lock up the church and so forth. Congregation had decreased. Money was lacking. He had to report to Georgetown. The church was not being used for regular services. And so it was a congregation without a priest. Before Father Barber was instructed to go to Georgetown and due to the financial situation, he slept on the third floor of the church. His bed was a strip of narrow carpet and it rolled up during the day. Also not having any heat in the building was another hardship he was facing. By then he was all alone. However, the fires of faith and devotion were kept burning through the leadership of Captain Bella Chase of Cornish, New Hampshire, which is just down the road. This was a saintly family 
doing morning, nightly prayers, rosary, and adding a sixth decade to the rosary for the Barber family. On Sunday, the whole catechism was recited with Captain Chase and wife presiding. The family formed the choir and chanted the Mass. 1914, the white building next to the church was demolished. However, before it closed, at some point, it was rented out and apartments were occupied by immigrants until they could purchase or rent homes. 1939 to 1949. Ah, the Knights of Columbus come on the picture. Realizing the situation, started to restore the church. The present pews right now in the church were restored in 1942 and the altar in 1948. Another renovation was held in 1964-65. Also during that time, electricity was installed. Since then, the church has been maintained by volunteers, being parishioners and Knights of Columbus. It's a quote I've read. More that is delved into the history of Old St. Mary's. It is a far-reaching influence on the life of the Catholic Church that started right here on what surely must be considered hallowed ground. So here we are, we're waiting for Father Sebastian, who's going to be our tour guide. He's going to uh, bring us to the oldest Catholic church in New Hampshire. But first, he needs to find the keys. <laughs> hey Moose, should we go visit St. Mary's Church? Should we go see the oldest church in New Hampshire? Are you happy about this? Well, that's okay, let's go anyway. Are we ready? Awesome. Let's go. Let us go. <laughs> what a road trip. Here we go, another road trip pilgrimage, woo! Oh. <laughs> okay, here we are. We're pulling up to what everybody here calls the old St. Mary's because there's a new St. Mary's church, but this is the oldest Catholic church in New Hampshire. The dramatic entrance. Ready? There's something to me that's really powerful about being able to come into these old spaces where hundreds, thousands of people over the years have come to pray, especially when it's this kind of small, intimate space like this. And just to, like, when we pray, we join our prayers into all of the prayers that have ever been prayed. <clears throat> and I think you really feel that in a place like this. So Father, one of the things that I know, you notice when you come in here is the stillness. Yeah. And it's kind of amazing, you know, we're close to kind of this bustling town and all this, but a few steps away you come into this, this little kind of sanctuary in the midst of all that, mm -hmm. this quiet, prayerful place. Mm -hmm. It's such a small space, so, so things have not been changed around since, you know, since it was built. The altar is set up so that when you celebrate Mass here, you're facing towards the tabernacle and not out towards the people. Mm -hmm. So. What is that experience like for you as a priest? Well, um, I have been a priest for 20 years. This is my 20th year. Of this the is priest. your 20th year 20 as a priest. Years, yeah. yeah. And this is, oh, you know, in all of my priestly life, I have never seen such an amazing uh, altar or such a structure 
that he had the connection for 200 years. And when I came in and I said, where do I say Mass? And people said, face the altar. I said, I had never done that before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is my first time and facing the altar and celebrating the Mass while the whole congregation is praying with me. And, and so you kind of feel that, that they're praying with you. You're not talking at them, but they're praying with they're you. They're praying with me yeah, and, yeah. and, and singing. And, and it's, it's a kind of, it can accommodate 30 people. And you, like you, if you are used to the bigger congregation and you see a, such a small crowd, like a 30 or 20, and you say, wow, this is good. And everyone can hear me. Yeah. Loud yeah. and clear. Yeah. No doubt about that. I think there's something really powerful about that, that small church, but a small church that's full of people. That's how, like, I grew up going to a very small church out in the country, but it was full on, on Sunday. Yeah. And so it didn't matter that it was only, you know, 30 people or 50 people, whatever it is. Yeah. It's that sense of we've filled this space and everybody here is participating and praying together. And that's really a beautiful experience, I think. We have a mass on Saturdays from June to uh, till October. Mm -hmm. The church is open on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. And we have mass every Saturday at 9 a.m. here. We get a good number of faithful who always uh, come for mass on Saturdays. And we pray and we visit the cemeteries that's just nearby. And uh, we get connected, you know, see, you, you could see the big history of 200 years. And uh, I'm so happy and I, because I feel proud of it because you are part of the big history of 200 years. Yeah. And which I never even thought about it. That, yeah. You know, this is something amazing. Yeah, there's a powerful <laughs> thing. It's like we're, we're participating with everybody who's ever prayed here. And that's one of the things I love about the Mass is that when we celebrate the Mass, it's never just us, it's us with everybody who's ever gone to Mass. And it's with the, the, the liturgy in heaven, like we're part of this one great big prayer mm -hmm. that we really just kind of enter into. And to have a place where you can feel that mm -hmm. is really a powerful thing. And me coming from India and celebrating Mass here in Old St. Mary, that takes us at Total different scenario, right? Like you, you feel church is universal. It is not just for you know a group, but it is universal. You know, you could feel that the internationality. Yeah, you know. you've been here in the United States for how long now? Five years. Four years. Four years. Yeah. Four years in the U.S. So, what is that like um, to be a priest in the United States versus being a priest in in India or anywhere else that you've been? Well. It's always uh, uh, challenging to be a missionary. Being a missionary is not something that is easy because you have to get, uh, you know, you learn, you learn the culture, learn the uh, faith, uh, learn the people, learn, learn their faith, their way of life, their way of sharing, food, traveling, accommodation, climate, snow, with all these uh, challenges, being a missionary is not easy. But um, in recent years, with all the technology, everything, and uh, you know, it. Uh, Evangelization has become a little more easier. You know, you can talk to the people, and uh, uh, you learn. And uh, you know, learning is a part of you know. It never stops. You learn. You're constantly yeah. learning. Constantly yeah. learning. Yeah. The faith, constantly learning, and you always uh, you know be available to the people because uh, you know 20 years doesn't mean that I have the license to do you know. But yeah. I'm also willing to learn what people are offering me. Yeah. You know. So you try to learn that when you come to when you came to come to America, you try to learn the culture and the thing. What is kind of do you have a favorite or some like American food that you really like or that you really don't like? I love pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so you've accepted the American yeah, culture. You yeah, love pizza. pizza. That's, pizza. That's good, dude. What's your least favorite? Something you don't like, like yeah. American food? I don't, I, I'm not a person of cookie or uh, donut. You don't like the sweets? I don't like the sweet, yeah. the sweet stuff. Do you cook? Do you cook a lot of Indian food or do you try to eat like American food most of the time? Um, it's of both. It's of both. Um, uh, whenever I get some free time, I cook you know, lots of Indian food. But whenever I'm kind of busy, I just uh, grab maybe from burger or I go to <laughs> <laughs> just like us. Just like, uh, I get a get a nice uh, uh, sausage sandwich from Dunkin' Donut you know, uh, because America runs on it. <laughs> Exactly. You've learned a lot yeah. in your time here. That's good. Yeah, the celebration of the Mass, um, you know, I have celebrated Mass. I, I was, I, as I said, 20 years of priesthood. I was a, a priest back in India. Then I, uh, I was a missionary to Uganda for three years, then back to Canada for seven years, and again back to India for uh, five years. Now I'm here. 
I have celebrated masses in many places uh, in the schools, in the churches, uh, uh, in the gym, and uh, in Africa I have celebrated mass under the trees because there are no churches, so you have to say mass under the trees. But here come you know here well established church and uh, everything is well organized and we know what we have to do. So here you need a preparation ahead of time. You know, you have to prepare, you know, maybe spiritually and you have to prepare ahead of time. And people wanted to talk to you and you find out your time and spend time with the people, you know, hearing confessions. And the biggest challenge in USA right now I'm facing is youth ministry. Hmm. That uh, I'm, we are trying to revive in our parish. And that is the biggest challenge right now mm -hmm. in, in our parish is youth ministry. Yeah, you know? yeah. And like you said, though, that's, you see that, that the parents right now have a big concern for passing the faith onto their kids. And mm -hmm. it's trying to uh, tap into that and to encourage that and to help that. Mm -hmm. that that's a, such a good and natural impulse to want to pass on the faith. Mm -hmm. No more flute d'amour. This is where mostly most of the catechism classes they were doing it here. Yeah. yeah. And that's where we are sitting and you see the old desk with the Beautiful the way they have come. Yeah. It's nice. Echo. So can you imagine having 150 students in this space? We don't know if it was all at once, but they had 150 students going to the school oh, wow. here in this building. Yes. Father, thank you so much for showing us uh, your parish, St. Mary's and Old St. Mary's. If if somebody wanted to come and, and visit Old St. Mary's Church, what would they? What could they do? When they can, when can they come and visit? The pilgrims are most welcome, and uh, just to give a call to the office, we will uh, arrange someone to help you with the touring, and, and uh, you know they will give you a kind of background and everything. Yeah, and you are most welcome. And so just, just to give a call. So if you can come on Saturday morning, they have mass at nine o'clock during the summer months uh, here at the old church, uh, or if you'd like a tour some other time, call them, call them in their office and, and they can arrange that for you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's really hard to describe the feeling of, of this church. It's, it's such an old building and it's this, this, narrow, this narrow brick building that, that seems much taller than it should be. And yet you go inside and there's this, um, this peaceful sanctuary that you enter into. Well, thanks everyone for joining us for this road trip pilgrimage to Claremont, New Hampshire, to St. Mary's Parish and the new St. Mary's Church and the old St. Mary's Church. Uh, great place to come and check out, great place to come and pray. Uh, if you're into history, if you're into the history of the church in New England, this is a, uh, an excellent place to come and check out. And uh, next year is the official 200th anniversary of Old St. Mary's. Uh, so stay tuned for, for updates about what's going to be going on for those celebrations. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you on the next one. Drive safe out there. Louis, are you getting a little tired? Is it, is it getting harder to bobble your head? That's okay. We love you anyway. Here we are in the wreck. Loneliness can debilitate us and make us sad. Solitude can exhilarate us and make us glad. Can that's, make where, that? that's where Father yeah. Sebastian yeah. sleeps. And that's where Father Sebastian <laughs> sleeps. Those boarded up windows on yeah. the third floor. I, I come down through a hole. <laughs> <laughs>